I watched a lot of movies before I uh, had this channel, and it's quite a backlog of at least some of the best or better movies that I had seen during that time that I feel are worth sharing. And um, considering The Handmaiden has uh, lots of romance aspects, I mean, that's a major part of its plot, and the, um, Call Me By Your Name, which I was recommended, what, a few months ago now, I thought it would be good to combine both these, because, hey, I mean, they're both romances, and also, they're both really good. So, uh, let's get started with Call Me By Your Name. Uh, it was made in 2017 by Luca Guadagnino. It's Italian. Um, it's a reasonably simple love story, and if you couldn't tell, it's between two uh, gay men. And it doesn't really focus on, I guess, conflict with that as much as you would expect considering it was set during the um what 1900s but yeah i mean it's just a really beautiful sweet love story that like what pretty much everyone could kind of relate to oh uh, yeah it was done really well if you uh, can't tell i think the cinematography here is just gorgeous like everything from the food which all looks delicious to the buildings to the water to the fields and trees Everything just looks so gorgeous. And yeah, it just, I mean, obviously it takes place during the summer, but it just reminds me of that summer vacation kind of feel. And yeah, that kind of fits with the whole theme of it because it really does feel like a vacation. Just uh, all those emotions that come with it whenever you go someplace different and meet different people. And it really captures that uh, kind of bittersweet aspect. It's just it's properly emotional where it needs to be, is uh, what I'm getting at. Uh, also, the music. Whew. I, I mean, The Mystery of Love is such a great song. And it's used perfectly in that um, the sequence where it is used. Like, that whole sequence is just gorgeous. Not much else to say about it. Uh, everything else is also really good. Just, I mean, no, The Mystery of Love is just the best part of it, though. Kind of no denying that. Uh, there's not much else to say about... What I really like about it, uh, there were a few weird and kind of jarring cuts that took me out of the movie briefly during, like, the first quarter, I guess first third. I'm not sure why they had those. It was just a little weird. Um, and I also kind of felt bad for, uh, Marzia. Kind of got ghosted, and, uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's fine. I did have a conversation with someone about this, and, um, like, I guess it's more about, uh, Elio exploring and just getting more comfortable with who he is, but still kind of felt bad for her. So yeah, if this looks good to you, check it out. Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think it makes any sense to your dad either. Maybe you did when you wrote it. That might be the kindest thing anybody has said to me in months. Kind? Yep. Kind. Yeah, I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10. That's uh, high praise. Really good movie. Check it out. The Handmaiden is a Korean movie uh, made in 2016 and was directed by Park Chan-wook. It is a romantic drama slash thriller that takes place in Japanese-occupied Korea in the 30s. The plot and script are incredibly intriguing and engaging, and it just constantly refreshes itself, making itself you know, more interesting. I barely felt the length of this movie, and it's, what, well over two hours long? It, it was just that engaging. And on the rewatch um, that I did just for this review, I picked up on even more subtleties and things that I missed, which just made me admire the story even more. Yeah. That's always a great sign if you rewatch the movie and you can get more from the experience. Aside from the writing. The cinematography? This is one of the best shot and looking movies uh, I've seen in a while. I mean, I know I said the same for uh, Call Me By Your Name, but like this one, this one looks a lot better in my opinion. Because not only do the sets and locations look I mean, perfect and utterly gorgeous, uh, Park Chan Wook actually utilized like the foreground and camera placement and movement to frame his actors in different ways um, in his scenes that are just so creative and show a level of mastery that you rarely see in directors. And, I mean, that's of course enhanced by those um, set and production designs, which are fully believable and utterly gorgeous. Like, from the costumes to the manner, it 
the, even to the forest, it all looked amazing. And probably the best accompaniment and one of my greatest admirations for this movie was uh, the music. Just like an old boy, the music is utterly incredible. Park Chan Wook has used some of the most memorable and best pieces of music I have ever heard. Not only just from films, but just overall. It's 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 that good. Um, the themes in this movie are also pretty good. I There's a few that I picked up on on my second watch. Both female characters have uh, dominating men who try and control their lives, and they both try and fight back. I mean... I, Kind of self-explanatory if you watch it, but yeah, like if you really focus on it, you can pick up on a lot of different subtleties and how they try and do that. Um, some I hadn't even noticed with how disrespectful they are. There's also some elements of uh, colonialism, like considering the different backgrounds of each character, it you could see how it um, affects their interactions and initial thoughts of each other. I mean, this did take place during the Japanese occupation of Korea, so you have um, Japanese and Korean characters, and eh, if you don't know. Not exactly a great time in between those uh, groups of people. <sighs> yeah, I find that um, at least for lesbian kind of media, which I mean I haven't consumed or seen a lot of, but uh, usually uh, the quality is kind of bad, really bad, and the writing is incredibly pandering or just really stupid, or it's like. Uh, Blue is the warmest color, where it's really exploitative. And I guess that brings me into the final topic, and the thing, I guess it's kind of the biggest hurdle for any kind of recommendation for some of these movies, is, uh, well, this movie has a reasonably explicit sex scene. It goes on for a bit. So I guess I'm gonna have to get into that, because that's, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> uh, most movie sex scenes, in my opinion, are completely unnecessary. Like, if you remove them, or censor them, or just implied them, there's nothing, absolutely nothing you would lose. Now, I do want to make a quick note that I'm not saying that they should just be censored. Like, of course they should be, like, in the movie, if that's what the director's vision is. I'm just saying that most of the time, you don't really need to have them. However, there are some movies that are the exception to that, and you actually get a lot out of those scenes. And this is one of them. There is actual, like, plot and character development in it. Uh, without going, like, into spoilers too much, you can tell by the way they change and how they talk about the um, subject that they bring up. Like, their opinions and plans are just changing throughout the scene as their allegiances kind of change. I guess this is more true for uh, Lady Hideko as uh, she, like, comes out of her shell. <laughs> the characters just bond and become closer and closer and closer as the scene goes on. And they eventually, yeah, I mean, they fully bond with each other. Um, as well as that, the music was, like, actually present in the scene, and it definitely enhanced that experience. And what um, Park Chan Wook was going for, it was not shot like a porno. It was kind of in a more comedic and lighthearted tone. And he also did it respectfully. Uh, no men were in the room, and they used a remote-controlled camera as well as filming, filming it as quickly as possible, like one to two scenes. All that to prevent the actresses from feeling uncomfortable. And when you compare that to Blue is the Warmest Color, there's no music, it's kind of shot like a porno, and it goes on and on and on and on. And the actresses felt like they were being used like prostitutes, and they had 10 days to shoot it, and they're doing six-hour sessions, and it seems like now, at least the allegations that the director is probably just jerking off the entire time. Yeah, that's uh, quite unfortunate. Uh, fortunately, Park Chan Wook uh, actually did this tastefully and uh, really well, and you can actually get stuff out of this whole experience. And finally, because a big difference between all of that and uh, this is uh, this movie is Korean, as I mentioned, and um, if you're unaware, the status of LGBT rights in Korea is, uh, not great. Remember, this is a 2016 movie, and in 2017, there was a Gallup poll, and 58% of South Koreans opposed same-sex same -sex marriage, while 34% supported it, and 8% were undecided. So, uh, yeah. It's, and remember, 
This is 2016 compared to 2017 that poll was made, so it was worse then. Now, of course, I don't want to say that it's just bold for anyone to do this. Of course, anyone can make like a steamy gay scene in any movie or piece of media. But considering the respect and talent and uh, notoriety of Park Chan-wook, the quality of this film actually makes a statement that resonated with audiences. Considering the discrimination LGBT people face in South Korea, what Park Chan-wook did here, it's bold, it's impressive, it's admirable, and he did a damn good job at it. If this looks good, check out the movie. <laughs> On my initial watch, after thinking about it for a while and finding about those circumstances, I had given it a 9 out of 10. But on this rewatch, I, I had to raise it to a 10 out of 10. It's, it's really that good. There's only tiny, tiny minor things where a few cuts I thought were a bit eh. And maybe you could argue that the sex scenes could have been shortened a bit. But those are so minor, and I'm not really even sure if I agree too much with those criticisms or if my opinion would change on them to just, like, agreeing with the movie. But, yeah, just all those aforementioned conditions, yeah, 10 out of 10. Well, that's it for now. Sorry I uh, got this out late. It's been a really busy month, so yikes. Well, thanks for watching, guys.